Now keep in mind that I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my My name is Mish and this is Sound and Color. This is going to be a visual art series where you follow me working on visual art and pairing it with a collection of music. And just so we are clear, this is not a tutorial. Bruh. I am sorry. Yeah, this is not a tutorial. Uh, please don't expect for me to be super technical. I am very much a novice, but you can follow along if you desire. I will do my best to provide all the materials that I use in the description box. If you're not familiar with me, since about 2018, I've been pairing visual art with my playlist that I make at Apple Music. And it did start with a desire for me to just have better looking cover art for my playlist, but it did evolve into something else. Um, I started to realize that the work that I was putting together actually created an environment and I was a little different and I was able to do different things with that. So this is an expansion of those ideas. So I'm a person that watches those work with me videos while I'm working and it helps me. So this is kind of like that only with like a lot more talking. Sorry. Let me reiterate. This is not a tutorial. Please don't look to, look to me for guidance on like anything, but please follow along and I'll do my best to help if needed or to provide more clarity on what I'm doing. Honestly, if you're watching this and you like want to see more content like this, please let me know what you'd like to see because I don't know. What we're gonna do from here is jump into my desktop and we're gonna go over Apple Music and also Adobe Photoshop. Now, to be clear, Apple Music is my daily driver. It's my preferred application. I do use Spotify, but usually I do that to clone a list and make it more accessible for everyone. So here we are on my desktop and this is actually the playlist that we're working on for this episode. So let's do a quick review. So first, here we are with this tiled artwork that I absolutely hate for the cover. Um, but more importantly, let's look at the song count. So we are at 11 songs and that is my only rule for this series. My rule is 10 tracks plus one. I find that if we keep a playlist under an hour, people revisit the experience and that's what I want. I want people to keep coming back to it and reliving that feeling is very rewarding for me for people to say oh wow that was very immersive so let's talk about the theme of the playlist itself this is going to be songs that you can listen to alone so i thought songs for solitude as i was looking for inspiration on the art here um, i was able to come across a collection of space themed uh, stock photos and they looked pretty dope and i instantly was like oh man what if i was like on a deserted planet what type of tunes would i want to hear so that's where we're going with it it's a little goofy but that's just me okay so i did start this image without y'all a couple days ago i really didn't get that far um but we will quickly go over what i did so far because I did save all of the images I used, I will link them below in case you want to try to mimic what I've done. I promise you I am I've not done anything spectacular. I just blended a few images together. I did have to like get creative and tile things and then blend them out and then merge them and add a um, mask on top so that I can use the gradient tool to blend them even further. But it's super simple. Um, we have like stars, like the layer of stars in the background. We have a gradient layer on top of that just so we could make an attempt to blend out the image that's on top of that. I do have a levels adjustment layer here so that we could just bring some more depth to the image and it didn't feel so like flat and strange and just unnatural. We want to try to make it match up a little bit. Um, and that's kind of it. I have an airbrush layer here because this is it. The airbrush layer is really like hiding the flaws <laughs> and shout out to this layer because it really is doing the work and that's really it. And then we have the spaceman or woman down here just like chilling. I'm going to go ahead and continue working on this and listen to the playlist and try to like figure out what I want to do and record the screen. Uh, voice over me will come in occasionally and tell you what's going on. But 
enjoy the ride. Uh, let's see what happens. Let's see what we can come up with. All right, so first things first, I am extracting the background from this image that I want to use. Now, there are plenty of ways for you to achieve this. I just don't trust the like software to do its job. I find that sometimes it misses things and I'd rather just get it as clean as possible on my first try. So I use the pen tool for that. It is super crispy. I was a little concerned at this point because I wasn't sure what the heck I was gonna do. I just knew that I wanted this photo to take up the top portion of the document. And I'm like, man, I want this to look good and not look corny. So right here, I'm not gonna hold you. I was panicking because I wasn't sure what I was doing. What I can say very confidently is I knew what I was trying to do, which was to adjust the color on that image. It was like all of these images were not from the same photographer. Um, there were some that were completely different environments and I'm trying to blend them together to create something new. So I wanted to make sure that the lighting kind of made sense. And that's a new thing that I've been working on this year is adjusting the color and some of these things that requires you to get into the curves, get into the levels, get into all of these things that I really don't know about, um, but you don't know until you try something. So experiment, it's fun. You can learn something. Alrighty, and earlier you saw me make these tentacles with a pen tool, super simple to make. You just like make a line and stroke the path and simulate pressure and it'll give you this nice little effect. Uh, I tried to make like a halo out of it and I just adjust the color. Now I'm going behind a subject and adding in more texture with a paint stroke brush. You'll see me switch to the aerosol here just to like create more texture and like figure out adding in different colors. So here we are with another photo that was from a completely different photographer. I think we're at uh, three photographers now. Um, just dropping that in to take up more space, like take advantage of the canvas. Fun fact, I used to do graphic design for a school that was my last job. One of the teachers at this school would tell the students, if I give you a large piece of paper, I expect for you to draw on the whole thing. And that's the approach that I'm taking with this canvas. It is 18 by 24, pretty large size canvas, 300 DPI, and it's poster size. So I'm just trying to take up as much space as possible in the event that I would want to print it. Yo, be better than me. Label your layers, group them together, especially if you plan on collaborating with someone else. Like me, myself, I usually just work for myself and with myself, so I don't really label my layers as well as I should. It's a terrible habit that I never got out of. Anyway, in the event that you have to move something around, you might wanna label your layers. Um, it, it's also hard to find things when things are not labeled correctly. We're getting close to the end of the graphic. When I started, I was not sure what the heck I was going to do. I also thought I bit off a little more than I could chew as I started working and realized like, oh no, it's going to take a lot more clicks <laughs> than I anticipated. Um, lots of blending, loads of blending. Um, there's so much that was done that I had to edit out because I wanted to keep this under a certain amount of time. But yo, this was a great exercise for me just on like having a theme and then coming up with a concept and all of that. So here I am just like dropping in the logo for the series and also like finding a place where I want to crop for the album art. Now let's get into the final graphic. I mean, look at the material. I love it and that's kind of rare. I'm typically a person who hates everything that they do, but I feel really good about this. A lot of the little goals that I have for myself, 
I was able to go ahead and knock it out. So I created a concept out of nowhere, found elements to tie that together visually, and then I went and found the songs to support the vibe. If you're interested in hearing what this sounds like, go ahead and look in the description box. I've put in the links to both the Apple Music and Spotify playlist and jam out to those. This is the end of episode one. I think we did it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of shocked at how I was able to piece that together. Again, this is one of my favorite things that I've made in a long time and I feel good. I feel proud of the thing that I've created um, both in Photoshop and with this video. I wanted to make a cohesive thing happen and I did that. If you're interested in more of this kind of content, please like, comment, and subscribe. In the comments, let me know what you're feeling. Is there something that I can tweak on the next episode? What improvements would you like to see happen? Now, if you're interested in knowing why I chose the songs I chose, meet me over on Patreon. Right now I'm offering a pay what you can system with tiers starting at $2. So it's mad affordable, just come through and chill. This weekend, I'll go ahead and post an after show on Patreon just to show you guys what my thought process was when I selected each song and how each track fits into the image itself. It's gonna be kinda corny, very stripped down in comparison to what this is, but you know, let's have the conversations we need to have. And with that being said, I think it's a good time to close this thing right on out. I've had all of the technical difficulties in the world today and I just wanna not be doing this anymore. Like I would say on Adobe and Chill, I'll see you next time. I'm not sure what I'm gonna make, but it'll be something.